The northeast of a country is an area immensely rich in wildlife. With its luxuriant riverine forests, the area provides an ideal habitat for a variety of species, both resident and migratory. A veritable paradise for wildlife, Assam especially is inhabited by a diverse range of birds and mammals. Orang Sanctuary is situated about 150 kilometers northeast of Guwahati. Located in Tarang district, Orang is easily approachable by road both from Guwahati and Tejpur. Now comprising 75 odd square kilometers, Orang was declared a game reserve in the year 1915. Originally, the area was mainly grassland, interspersed with a few pioneer tree species here and there. To have an intimate look and analysis of some of the species of fauna of this region, the Orang Wildlife Sanctuary provides an ideal opportunity. The mighty Brahmaputra constitutes the southern boundary of the sanctuary. The ruddy shell duck or the Brahmini duck, as it is more commonly known, feeds along the riverside. Breathing in Ladakh, the Brahmini duck migrates to this area during winter for feeding. Staying through the winter, the bird makes the long journey back to Ladakh to breed around the onset of spring. The white-cheeked wagtail is another winter visitor to Uran. An uncommon visitor, the wagtail breeds in the Siberian wilderness. The onset of the dreaded Siberian winter signals this pretty bird to fly south, and they thus come to Uran. Generally found on the secluded areas along the riverside, the wagtail is basically insectivorous. Algae, the simplest of aquatic vegetative growth, plays an important role in the sanctuary's ecosystem as a whole. It serves as basic food for a variety of birds and mammals. This algae can be found growing in and around the rivulets, streams and ponds. The sandy land areas adjoining the streams and rivulets provide ideal conditions for the growth of varying types of vegetation, like weeds and grasses. These constitute the pioneer herbaceous plant species. As we move away from the waterfronts, the tiny annual vegetation gives way to stabler perennial varieties of plants like thatching grass, reeds, elephant grass and so on, due to the changing soil conditions. The grassland areas are studded with patches of flowering plants, both annual and perennial. These plants also serve as animal food. The major portion of the sanctuary area is covered by vegetation, mainly constituting grasses and weeds, which, besides providing food for the herbivorous species, also provide cover and shelter to both herbivorous and carnivorous species. The bush chat is generally found in the grassland areas. A solitary bird by nature, it feeds mainly on insects and grains. This bird is also a winter visitor to this area. Like the bush chat, the hopo is also a regular visitor to this sanctuary. It is generally an insectivorous bird, mostly preferring to feed on larvae and also earthworms. The red-wattled lapwing is more active at nights, 
especially before sunup and after sundown. The black partridge is rather a shy bird. It can usually be seen ferreting for food in the early mornings and late afternoons. Its diet centers on grain, tubers, berries and larvae and insects of all kinds. The tall grassland areas provide shelter for the herbivorous species such as this rhino and deer. They often venture onto the open areas. The Dhansiri River forms the natural boundary to the west. The right bank of the river contains human settlements. The low-lying damp areas, especially near water, contain profuse growth of the Torah plant, which the elephants find very palatable. The woodland areas occur mostly in the northern parts of the sanctuary. The Orang Wildlife Sanctuary initially played host to visiting stray elephants who found on it ideal feeding grounds. Over the years, the numbers of such visiting elephants increased. They consist of only male elephants. And from over just half a decade ago, these visiting elephants began to stay back in the area. As the dense woodlands and the rich and nutritive vegetation provided ideal conditions of food and shelter. The woodlands of Orang are entirely created by man. The afforestation wing of the State Forest Department took up the task on a massive scale and successfully turned an area which was once less suitable for crop vegetation into virtually a small forest. This tree pie, perched here on a Maliana tree, is a common bird in the woodlands. The barbet, like the tree pie, is also found among the dense deciduous trees. A beautiful bird, the black-headed oriole attracts all with its melodious song. The shikara is a bird of prey. It feeds on smaller birds and mammals, including rodents and lizards. Like most other birds of prey, the shikara swoops down on its victim from its leafy perch. It is capable of highly maneuverable flight. The grey-headed miner searches for food under the bark of a tree. The Orang Sanctuary contains over a dozen tigers. This supra-predator, evenly distributed over the area, feeds mostly on hog deer and wild bull. Kite Another bird of prey is a common sight in the sanctuary. 
It drops nestlings and also snatches rodents and snakes for its meal. It perches on a branch, securely holding on to its skill with its sharp claws and feeds leisurely. The kite possesses acute vision, enabling it to spot its victims from quite a distance. The beautifully plumaged small green bee-eater is a winter visitor to this area. It feeds on small insects using its long curved bill effectively. It generally dwells in the less dense woodland areas moving around in loose groups of 20 or so. The wild aster is a seasonal flower. The plant is a kind of herb. Its brilliant yellow flowers attract butterflies and other insects. The blossom-headed parakeet, which moves around in small groups, usually shares its roosting place with the spotted dove, with which it is seen here. The tiny tailor bird is basically insectivorous, feeding on small insects. It is very agile. It is rather difficult to spot, as due to its small size, it merges into the dense background undergrowth. The owl is a common sight in the sanctuary. The ageritum is a variety of weed which usually sprouts after the onset of monsoon. The purple flower is very attractive to look at. The ageritum is attributed with medicinal value. The grassland area is annually burnt to arrest uncontrolled growth and also to encourage fresh sprouting. These young shoots are much preferred by deer. The hawk deer is a common species found in the sanctuary. This animal is basically a grassland dweller. It moves around in small groups. The barking deer is mostly confined to the woodlands. Basically solitary in nature, it moves around with its mate sometimes. This cluster of greenish pink flowers belong to the Gingibaraceae family.
There are about 200 wild boar in the sanctuary. The wild boar is a herbivorous animal. Birds, especially the cattle egret and the jungle miner, often hitch a ride and pick the insects off the boar's body and also from the immediate surroundings. The animal prefers to eat roots and tubers. Males generally keep themselves away from the main herd. The boar are usually very alert to any other presence in the vicinity. At the slightest hint of any intrusion on its territory, it immediately dodges into sheltering undergrowth. The grasslands with its perennial water sources provide the ideal habitat for the famous rhino of Assam. Next to Kajiranga National Park, Orang Sanctuary contains the largest concentration of one-horned rhino in the world. There are over 90 rhinos in Orang. In fact, the rhino population in Orang is rather too dense, yet the abundant availability of food in the sanctuary supports them very well. The rhino is among the prized inhabitants in the sanctuary. The animal is on the list of endangered species in the country as rampant poaching and destruction of their natural habitat had alarmingly lessened their population. The animal is hunted for its horn which fetches very high prices. Strict watch is kept at Orang to guard against poaching and also towards preservation of their habitat. The ponds and pools of water in the sanctuary contain a variety of fish and other aquatic species. Besides that, these also serve as fresh water sources to the variety of bird and mammal species. The yellow wagtail searches for food, mainly insects, among the water hyacinth. It is usually a solitary bird and associates only with its mate or in very small groups. It is extremely interesting to observe the migration of this tiny bird as specific tagged ones have been observed in the same spot in the sanctuary the following year. Animals find these pools very convenient as they are located near the sheltering undergrowth. The different species of birds go about searching for food in their own separate ways. The spotbill is a winter visitor to this area. The snipe here is a local bird and the coot with its jet black plumage is another common local species. All these birds of different species foraging for food without disturbing one another present a picture of perfect harmony. The purple heron is one of the larger species of local birds found at Orang, 
it is rather a timid bird. This is the grey heron, and these are the large egrets searching for fish using its keen eyesight. Apart from the large egret, the little egret is also rather plentiful in the sanctuary. It is an avid fisher. An extremely active bird, the Pied Kingfisher is also very attractively coloured. Unlike other species of Kingfisher seen in the area, the Pied Kingfisher has its own distinctive style of fishing. It hovers about 8 to 10 metres and scans the water below. Spotting fish, it folds its wings and swiftly plummets down, expertly catching the fish under the water. The blue kingfisher is another familiar sight. The stork family is a dwindling species. Once they were common sight around human settlements a couple of decades back. The species have, however, thrived in the Urang sanctuary. The white-necked stork is one of the three main kinds of stork found in Urang. The others are the adjutant stalk and the black neck stalk. The sandpiper prefers marshy land and moves about in small groups. The common teal mainly eats fingerlings and mollusks. Here they are busy searching for mollusks. The fishing eagle often makes an appearance. A Brahminikite looking for small animals and reptiles. The stork and pelican appear during winter, landing in the sanctuary. The sanctuary is one of the few places which the pelican regularly visit. They generally avoid areas near human settlements. The pelican is an avid fisher. Wading in the pond, it uses its comparatively large bill and keen vision effectively. They are gregarious birds by nature.
Pelicans and adjutant storks usually fish in large groups. This ensures that the fish hardly can escape. This community fishing, in fact, is quite analogous to human community fishing. The birds prefer to rest a while after a heavy meal. Pelicans build their nests all bunched together in a generally untidy group. Both the male and female of the species take turns at incubating the eggs, which take about a month to hatch. Erosion poses a constant threat to the southern and western boundaries of the sanctuary, especially during the wet season. This erosion eats away considerable amounts of land which is always less than the fresh deposits of silt. Rhinos habitually use the same trail in moving from area to area. This habit renders them susceptible to the wily poacher who may ambush it. To guard against this danger of poaching, patrolling parties of the State Forest Department exercise constant vigilance over the entire territory. Elephant cubs rescued from drowning during the seasonal high floods are looked after and cared for. Some of these cubs are trained for later use by the patrolling parties. Right from the divisional forest officer to the forest guard, everyone is involved and alert all round the clock in protecting the territory. There are several watchtowers located at suitable vantage points in the sanctuary. 
Orang Sanctuary is rather an unusual wildlife preserve in the country. The entire sanctuary was the fruitful result of the efforts of man. The area was taken over by the Assam Forest Department with the specific view to cover the area with indigenous tree species. And they succeeded in creating a forested area where semi-barren land existed before. This was done with the view of creating an area where wildlife could live in and exist. Wildlife conservation was the overlying final objective and indeed the existence now of the varied species of birds, mammals and reptiles in Orang is evidence that they had accepted the invitation to come and live in the area. As human civilization expands, man is increasingly encroaching on territory that are natural habitat of a variety of our wildlife brethren. It is man's responsibility to keep the ecosystem intact and protect them from any outside interference, including biotic. And as one looks at Orang today, we find evidence that this has been a true success story in wildlife conservation. Thank you.